That's German television carried, carried the, uh, the greatest detail of the event. We're having a bit of trouble with our uh, with our satellite, Robert. So we're going to we're going to continue. Lost, lost the picture. Yes. The group responsible for today's murders calls itself Black September. Sources familiar with its activities say its adherents number about 250. They are extremely militant and in some cases suicidal. The name Black September comes from the days in September of 1970 when Jordan's King Hussein drove the Palestinian guerrillas out of his country. Sources say Black September is currently without a leader and that a struggle for power is going on within its ranks, which may account for the daring kidnapping in Munich. A leader of the group was killed when a bomb wrecked his car a month and a half ago in Lebanon. Avram Zaritsky, an NBC News producer, recently spent a month on the Israeli-occupied West Bank of the Jordan River. He is here now with some observations on Arab-Israeli relations. I've just come back from a month's visit to the West Bank of Jordan, which is now held by Israel. I spoke to dozens of Palestinian Arabs who live there, plus others who had come there for a summer visit. Most of the Arabs I talked to were former government officials, students, intellectuals, and professionals. Not one had any praise for the Palestinian guerrilla movement. Most felt that acts of violence would not lead to a solution of the Palestine problem. A former foreign minister of Jordan told me that the Arab terrorist movement had achieved nothing. They made headlines, he said, plus committed senseless acts of violence. But for the Palestinians themselves, they had achieved nothing. One student who had sympathized with the Arab guerrillas, but now is disillusioned, said, we were the guerrillas when we needed them. They are just publicity seekers and self-serving opportunists. If there is any support for the Arab guerrillas, it is not apparent on the occupied West Bank. There have been no major incidents there against Israelis for more than two years. And yet physically, the West Bank with its hilly terrain is a perfect setting for guerrilla activity. In the Arab world, as in most places, nothing succeeds like success. But the Arab guerrillas have not made a single political gain for the Palestinians. And as a result, most Palestinians are disillusioned with them. Some observers feel the acts such as the one carried out today in Munich and the recent massacre at the Lord Airport in Israel indicate the guerrillas have lost much of their political power, much of the power they once had, and are now resorting to ever-increasing episodes of insane violence. We have in our studios in Washington, Shmuel Segev, Washington correspondent for Mariv, a leading daily newspaper in Israel. He has written extensively on Arab guerrilla activities. Mr. Segev, could you say something about the psychology of the Palestinian terrorists? Well, I think that uh, one who examines the activities of the Arab guerrillas must conclude that Arab uh, political assassinations is a permanent phenomenon in the Middle East. At least one king, two prime ministers, several ministers, and countless of innocent people have died as a result of guerrilla activities. One would, hard, would find it very difficult to define a kind of a common psychology for all the guerrilla organizations. I heard your remarks before. I perfectly agree with, the, with your conclusions that the various guerrilla groups are losing ground. They have lost much in the Arab countries. They, didn't, they did not achieve anything in Israel, and as a result, they are reverting now to activities outside the area. I, I may add that, uh, to my knowledge, this is the only so-called liberation movement which is fighting a war outside Israel, and because uh, anybody can ask whom they are going to liberate. Are they going to liberate Germany or Italy or France? The fact is that they did not gain anything in Israel, and that's why they are going now to Europe. May, may I, do we have time for, to ask one more question? Of course. All right. What I was wondering uh, in, in remarking about the, the uh, loss of political power, how, how do you account for that? Now, you have this tremendous splintering of the Arab groups in the Middle East now, and this one that we've been dealing with today and, and a few incidents in the past, the Black September, seem to be extremely radical. What has happened to the other Palestinians? 
Well, the, the biggest group is the Fatah, of course, has, it has lost ground. Now there are two other groups, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and another splinter group, which has a similar name, which both were crashed during the civil war in Jordan 1970. Now, as a result of that civil war, was born the Black September, and the Black September is trying to find a kind of a recognition inside the guerrilla movement. Incidentally, uh, today, I think, there is a meeting in Damascus of the various guerrilla organizations. They, were, they are struggling for power. They are uh, competing one against each other. They are struggling against the leadership of Yasser Arafat because they think he is not radical enough, he is not extreme enough, and uh, that's why they are trying to, to define a new strategy. Uh, I, I guess that uh, the Black September is trying to influence the Palestinian public opinion. They know that they cannot achieve anything against Israel, but at least they are trying to convince the Palestinian public opinion or the Arab public opinion that more radical movement or more radical activity could lead to something. But judging from the results of the insane mm -hmm. action of today, I think Mr. that uh, it will be hard. Mr. Mr. Segev, we are running short on time. Thank you for joining us. We just had uh, what appears on the surface to be some, uh, some bad news from Munich. Hans Klein, who is the press officer of the Olympic uh, Committee, announced just a few moments ago that a news conference would be held apparently later tonight he wasn't specific saying that he would have some grave news that may indicate that more of the hostages are dead than was at first indicated there is no way of knowing what will happen next whether the israelis will conduct reprisals for today's events they have in the past and it, again it's hard to tell what effect all this will have on the future of the olympic games a memorial service for the two Israelis killed today will be held tomorrow morning. And Avery Brundage, president of the International Olympic Committee, said tonight the games would resume tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jim Hartz, NBC News, New York. Back in 1893, Dave Lennox built his first furnace. Little did he know that as the years passed, someone would ask, Why not add something that cools? Today, the name Lennox is found on total indoor comfort systems. Nifty weather machines that warm, cool, even clean the air and control humidity in homes and buildings. boy, Dave. Look in the yellow pages for Lennox quality systems. Nice going, Dave. is crisp and cool, light and white, but never timid or shy. Vigno Branco means white wine. Who knows what it will mean to you? That's dirt waiting for your engine. Dirt wants to foul up your engine. Dirt wants your car to stall. But a good detergent gasoline like Mobil can help stop dirt. Going my way? Dirt has an enemy. Mobil detergent gasoline. Two moments to bring you this late word from Munich, West Germany. A West German government source said early Wednesday morning, West German time, that all nine Israeli hostages held by the squad of Arab commandos in Munich are dead. The government source also said that four of the Palestinian guerrillas were dead, three were captured, and that one was unaccounted for following a gun battle with police at a West German Air Force base near Munich. One policeman was reported killed. A spokesman said terrorists who were not hit in the opening shots by in which they and the hostages had been carried from the Olympic village to the Air Force base. The hostages were killed, the source said, after they endured a day of terror in their Olympic Village headquarters where two of their countrymen had been killed in earlier fighting. Once again, a West German government source said that all nine Israeli hostages held by the Arab commandos in Munich, West Germany, 
have been killed. This is Jim Hartz, NBC News. Good night. In October.